Let's get into it. Hello everyone, I'm Connor Miller and I study the future of work. You may hear my neighbors downstairs. They are very lively and they are honorary guests of this video today. 2020 was a doozy. We all know this, we all experienced it, we were all there. And as a result of the pandemic, I was unemployed from March to December. So I had a lot of time to think and kind of figure out what I wanted to do in terms of the orbit and the future of work and you know my whole deal. Pre-2020, I wanted to help creators on the internet make a profitable side hustle. I wanted them to turn their hobbies into something that could bring in a passive income so that they could have a little bit more freedom with what they do with their time. And as the year progressed with pandemic, civil unrest, running a business felt more and more weird, especially when we realized that capitalism created bizarre behaviors in our society <laughs> that ultimately crumbled. I talked to business owners and they said, I feel bad marketing. I feel bad promoting myself, especially when there's a lot of this bullshit going on. So I took a step back and I was like, I feel weird too. I don't wanna take your money when we're unemployed and also just trying to not get sick, uh, when we're trying to not get pepper sprayed by the police. There were much bigger problems at stake. So I tried to refocus. Making like businesses felt bad, but activism felt good. So I spent my newfound free time sleeping and also I wanted to help and uplift my community. I read books on things that mattered. Uh, I have some of them here, which I've talked about in previous videos. Joyful Militancy and also Blueprint for Revolution, which is all about creating solidarity within your communities. And I implemented these by just trying to help my neighbors. And by my neighbors, I, of course, I mean the people that live next to me, IRL, but also my neighbors on the internet. I wanted to sustain their hope, their joy, and their capacity to deal with the deluge of bullshit that was going on in the United States. Keeping that in mind, in 2021, I was thinking, how does this affect the future of work? The future of work that felt meaningful and felt like it mattered was the work I was doing in my communities online and in real life. Mostly online, because I'm not, I'm not in real life anymore. <laughs> in 2021, I believe that the future of work looks like radical systemic change. 2020 exposed a lot of real problems in our public school system, in general infrastructure of our government, and on social media platforms. I truly believe that we have the tools to solve these problems if we clearly identify and define them, and then do what we can with our computers and our phones. For me, personally, that means community organizing and education. Something else happened after the, like around the end of 2020, I had been unemployed and I was applying to three jobs a week so I could get my unemployment benefits. Uh, while that was happening, I actually got paid to like apply for certain jobs. I applied for a job at Airtable and they paid me to like do the job application, which was amazing. I got paid a $200. <laughs> but then in November, I applied to a job and they interviewed me four times. <laughs> and after the fourth interview, they said, yeah, you can come do marketing stuff for us uh, remotely. And I was like, great, this is fantastic. Part of the reason I got the job was because of all the visible work that I put out on the internet. The YouTube videos, the Medium posts, the podcasts, the work that I did with like webinars, with Patreon, all of that just built this body of work that when I went into these interviews and talked to people, some of them had heard of it or even read my stuff and others liked hearing how much I had put out into the world and they could look it up if they were interested. Sharing my work online created this opportunity for me. And I highly encourage that if you are looking to, you know, break out into the professional sphere, try publishing your own stuff because you have all the tools to do it. Now, at my current job, I run community programs, which is something I care about deeply. And honestly, I couldn't ask for a better job. In 2021, because I have a full-time job, this means obviously I'm not gonna be doing business therapy. I'm not gonna do as many one-on-ones with people helping them create their online business. I do, however, want to create as much educational content as possible, whether it's on TikTok, 
whether it's on YouTube, wherever I can, I believe that I have the power to help people like my parents, my friends, venture into the online space and do things that were previously impossible in terms of information sharing and community organizing. If I were to distill the concept, it's just harnessing the power of the internet for good. And I know it sounds cheesy, but it's super true. Now you may be thinking, how do I harness the internet for good? And that's where I bring in Thinking in Systems by Donella Meadows. I'm gonna show you the cover here. I hope you can see it, it's a little bright. Maybe I'll superimpose it. Donella Meadows in Thinking in Systems highlights the fact that like systems are very complex and it's very hard to change them. Especially in like governments, you can swap out the players, but the rules remain the same and it's really hard to create change. But one of the ways that you can change a system is by changing the flow of information. The example that Donella Meadows uses is fishermen will like overfish an area because they don't have information about how many fish are left in the ocean. Their information that they're getting is how much money they're making selling the fish on the market. But if somehow, if they were able to see how many fish there were in wherever they were fishing and balance that information to create a sustainable loop, then it would benefit everyone. To bring it back to more concrete terms, we can change the system. Our government, our school system, our social systems simply by changing the way that we share information. It's already happening. We've seen it with Wall Street bets. We've seen it with people organizing online for the entirety of the Black Lives Matter movement in 2020. We've seen so many people just use social media as avenues for social change. And I invite you to look at all of the things that you have, whether it's a Twitch account, a TikTok account, and think of it as a tool to relay information for positive change. While you're doing this, I'm also reminded of something that Seth Godin said. Seth Godin is an MIT alum who is very famous for writing books on marketing, and he also has a podcast. He's very smart. Uh, but he says, you are responsible for the ideas that you share, especially on the internet. So whether you have 30 followers or 30,000 followers, you are responsible for what those people see. So when you post something, think about what is the impact of what I'm posting and is it going to help us move forward towards the social change that we want to see? Further, I invite you to put your ideas out there. I talk to too many of my friends who think they should start a podcast but don't feel like they should because everyone's starting a podcast. And the reason everyone has a podcast is everyone probably should if you're interested in something. It's all about creating visible work, especially if you're trying to be a part of some sort of organization, whether it's a job or an activist movement. I invite you to learn a social media platform, a new one. I, in 2020, just because, you know, I'm, I was unemployed, I was streaming on Twitch and it is super hard. If you've ever streamed on Twitch, I guarantee you, you know the experience of something going wrong and having no idea why. And it happens almost all the time. But the more you do it, the better you get. My dad currently uh, is, my dad is not very computer savvy, but he got himself a GoPro because he really liked seeing other people hiking with their GoPros. And now he's learning how to upload stuff to YouTube. Just believing in yourself and knowing it's going to be hard and that you're going to make mistakes and trying a new platform is something that you can do to be part of the new relay of information. When you're doing this, it is so important to know that you don't have to have the largest audience. You just have to have the strongest quality of audience. When I was in high school, our teachers had trouble wrangling a class of 30. And you can get a class or an audience of 30 on the internet pretty easily. No matter who you're reaching, no matter how small or niche the audience is, it's more than can probably gather in your living room, which in itself is a huge achievement. Lastly, while you're doing this and participating in the online arena, you will encounter people that inspire you and people that are doing what you would like to do. 
pay attention to these people, take notes, and try to imitate what works because they're putting their visible work out there so that you can do your visible work and invisible work better. If I'm gonna get even more concrete and more tangible, here's some like actual things that you can do to start. Try out TikTok. I know TikTok's been in the news. I know some people are worried about like privacy. TikTok is an incredible information sharing platform that shows stuff that's relevant to you. And also if you post a TikTok, you can have an audience of a lot. Like your likelihood of blowing up on TikTok is surprisingly good. <laughs> So if you are interested in delightful content and also surprisingly good like information, just try it out. Secondly, card.co, card with two R's. You can make a static website with a custom URL for like $20 a year, which is cheaper than printing business cards sometimes. And this way you can have just an online presence. In the indie web movement, they call it an H card, which is just your face, a short bio of what you do and where your social medias are. Like that's all you need for your website really. And card.co I think is currently the most economical way to do that. This isn't sponsored, I just love that. If you're interested and kind of like a challenge, try streaming on Twitch, pick up a video game and just figure out what live streaming is like. I've seen evidence that people can do like online education really well if they draw from the experience that they get streaming on Twitch. And I think that developing that relationship with your audience and with chat and also managing like how to do it comfortably in your own home is an incredible skill. So if you're up for a challenge and also into education, try streaming on Twitch. Uh, further, get off of Facebook. I know it's super hard and it's gonna be really slow. I'm still on it because a lot of my family's on it, but I'm just slowly but surely just spending less and less time on Facebook. Of course, I'm on Instagram. I'm not perfect, but I'm trying because I know it's the right thing to do. And then if you want, you can learn how to code, do computer programming, but also know that you don't have to. And that's some of the most important work in engineering is learning also how to responsibly use the tools. Further, if you're interested in code and you can't wrap your head around it, there are a ton of no-code platforms that you can try stuff out on. Off the top of my head, Airtable is a great one. Bubble.io, I think it's called, is another no-code platform you can try stuff out in. I'll post an article. Uh, Ryan Hoover has a Medium article that lists a ton of no-code platforms. You can make uh, smart speaker skills. What I'm saying is it's really easy to start. You don't need to know a lot. You just need to step into an unfamiliar place and orient yourself. I don't know what else to tell you. In conclusion, 2020 was a shit show. 2021, I'm ready to rebuild our broken system. And I think that we have the tools to do it. The problems are visible. The work is clear. And you and I talking right now is proof that we can gather together our collective resources and motivate each other for lasting systemic change. I think that's all I wanted to get off my chest for the update. I'm gonna try to do these more. It was a pain to set all this up, so hopefully I find a way to do this a little bit better. Just, there's a lot of tripods. I have two tripods up. I had to reconfigure this. It was, it was ridiculous. Thank you for listening, and I will see you in my orbit.